everybody. Welcome to the backyard today. We're going to prepare for you a special dish because we actually cleaned out the ice box, folks, and we found a package of quail. And so we thought we would prepare the quail today and we'd share that with you on what we do. Before we get started on that real quick, I want to comment on one thing. Well, it's actually two, but I'm going to save one to later. My niece decided to make a chuck wagon cook. She did this by hand. I'm gonna walk over here a little closer to the camera. She did this by hand. And it's got a rocking M actually on the bandana. Now her name is Emma. So I wanna thank you Emma for making this, but we're gonna call this Emmett after Emma. So Emmett is now my new helper and you're gonna enjoy this because he's gonna end up making my videos a lot better because he's gonna coach me and teach me how to do a better job. Let's get started on this quail, folks. All right, underneath here, we've got some quail. We've got five of them and they're whole, legs and everything. We also have some Italian pork sausage. Now you can use spicy sausage or a mild sausage you can use a breakfast type sausage in this or a chorizo. Just whatever sausage you use, make sure it's loose and doesn't, it's out of the casing in case it happens to have a casing in it. And we wanna take some of this sausage and we wanna stuff it in this quail. Now folks, you gotta kinda of be easy with this, uh, depending on who shot this quail or how you got it. This quail might be a little tender. I wanna put that together. So at least if you zoom in here real quick, you can see how we've got this stuffed up inside there. And Lisa, stay there for just a minute. We've got this sausage stuffed up in there and we did these already for you. Now to help this cook, we want to tie the legs together. And we don't want to do anything real scientific in that. And I was a Boy Scout years and years ago, but I don't think the knot part of it stuck. So we're going to try to get the little legs of this quail put together. Folks, you can do this with Cornish hens. It's just as you go through this recipe, if you do it with Cornish hens, we're going to need to make sure that you amp up some of your ingredients because the Cornish hen is obviously a little bit bigger. Well, I don't know what's going on with that. Sounds like we need to work on this now just a little bit. But there you go, folks. You got some sausage stuffed inside. A quail. Now we have not salt and peppered these at all because we're going to do that a little bit with uh, what we need to do a little later. Okay? Alright, we're going to cook those in a 12 inch Dutch oven. And we have a 12 inch deep Dutch oven. Now folks, this is a new oven. This is a brand new oven, but we sanded it and we put our seasoning on the inside because you don't, well, I don't say you don't have to, but I prefer to be seasoned the way I want. Now, something that I do is I don't want the quail to be right here on the bottom of the Dutch oven. So I'm going to take these onion slices like this right here, and I'm going to lay them around the bottom. We've got five quail, so we've got five onion slices. I'm going to put them around there. And we'll come in here in a minute and show you this. We're going to put one quail standing up on each of those onion slices. That's going to keep the quail up off the bottom of the Dutch oven. It's going to add a little onion flavor to the dish, but it's just something that I usually do. Depending on what you're cooking, you might put it on a lemon peel or slice of lemon or something like that. Now, a lot of people that are familiar with Dutch oven cooking are going to question a few things. One, most people don't like boiling anything that's acidic. In their Dutch oven. It's real hard on your seasoning, folks. But if you take care of your oven and do a good job, you can get away with it every once in a while. But you do want to be careful with that. So to this mixture, we want to add a half a cup of white wine and a cup of water. And that's what's in here, folks. Now this is actually a sherry because that's what we had left. But you can use a white wine. To me, red wine's not the best for this dish. I'm not a wine person, but 
red wine doesn't actually go with that very well. All right, again, we haven't put any salt in here, so just bear with us as we go. You can see how we come out. We're gonna put a tablespoon of soy. We're gonna get some salt from that soy, okay? We wanna put a tablespoon of black pepper, and we kinda of wanna shake that around in there a little bit. We wanna put a tablespoon of fresh garlic, which is about a clove, clove and a half of garlic. I'm gonna put a tablespoon of red pepper flakes. Again, just kind of dust that around in there so it's evenly distributed. The last thing, we wanna put a teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves. We got an unusual flavor profile going on here, folks, so bear with me. In this bowl, we have two cups of cubed zucchini and a half a cup of julienne red bell pepper. You can use green bell pepper, you can use whatever bell pepper you want. I just happen to have some red, so we're using that. And again, we're gonna come in here in a minute, show you folks what we've got put together here. But uh, if you don't wanna use zucchini, you can use a yellow squash, you can use a butterscotch squash, uh, you can use eggplant, you can use any of those will be okay in here. Try to make these, as you do any recipe, you, you wanna make them kind of your own. Uh, food, I always comment on food being a lot like music. There's a lot of different genres of music out there and we all listen to a little bit of others, but we have those that we prefer. Same way with the dish. Feel free to make that recipe your own. In here, we have two tablespoons of chopped green olives and two tablespoons of olive juice. Again, gonna be some salt coming from that olive juice. That's the brine of those olives. Okay, we wanna kinda of sprinkle that around in here. We kinda of wanna make sure that's all evenly distributed. Okay, and now Lisa, if you'll zoom in here and we'll show these people what we've got. This is kinda of gonna be a one pot dish. But you can see we have our quail standing up in here. We've got the zucchini and the red pepper. We got that kind of round in there and we sprinkled all of our stuff on there. Now we're gonna cook this in the Dutch oven. If you're cooking this in the house, you wanna cook this at about 300 for about, oh, 35 to 45 minutes, depending on how, these, how big your quail are and what you've got them stuff with. All right, so we're gonna cover this up. Our fire's dying down out here. We're getting some good coals. I'm gonna jump in there and get this oven cooked. Just like anything in the Dutch oven, folks. When you put your coals around the outside, you're gonna have hotter spots than you do in others. You wanna periodically rotate your Dutch oven and you wanna rotate your lid the opposite direction. This helps balance your heat out. How often, people ask me, how often do you do that? I think your experience is gonna tell you, but you can't not do it too much, okay? But I would say every five to 10 minutes, depending on what you're baking, some things are more forgiving than others on your heat. But remember to rotate your Dutch oven. The last thing before we put some coals on this and get it cooking, a lot of chuck wagon cooks gonna look at me kind of crazy, but I've got some of these old lanterns, all right? I happen to use in a couple of these lanterns, and I just started this. I started buying the oil that goes in a tiki torch. I believe that's what you call those little torches you put up. It's supposed to help keep the bugs away. I put some of that inside here, and it gives off a little bit of a smell, but it has done a really good job of helping keep the insects down. And that little trick right there came from Emmett, folks. Emmett told me about that yesterday when we took him out of the mailbox. So let's put this to cook. We'll come back and show you what we got at the end. We're outside again and welcome back. We appreciate you watching our videos. We enjoy that very much. Your comments and all your likes. 
Folks, we got our Dutch oven cleaned up after we got it cooked. We got this quail in here. We're gonna pull our lid off. And I'm gonna get Lisa to zoom in here real quick just to show you kind of what this looks like. Our quail's kind of in there. It's got a little dark and the heat that's on top. We did rotate this pretty often. And folks, again, like I say, cooking something real acidic in your cast, it can be real hard on your cast iron, all right? So take good care of your cast iron and don't do that regularly. You can get away with it every once in a while because this is a new seasoning for me. I wanted to do this like that to test out my cast and make sure it's gonna hold up. I'm gonna get a little bit of this out of here so it can cool. Then we're gonna get one of these quail. We're gonna put it in this kind of bowl-like plate thing we got. The other thing is metal spoons in your cast iron can be hard on your cast iron. You wanna use a wood or a plastic. And these little dollar store plastic spoons, they're so handy, folks, to use. And they're very inexpensive, so if you like I do and you forget them, then uh, you're not out a whole bunch. We're gonna take a little bit of this wine drizzle we have. We wanna kinda of drizzle that over the top. And again, we scooped up the onion that was underneath there as well. Now, we're gonna let that kinda of cool just a minute because I know if I bite into that right now, y'all are gonna be, get a big laugh. So folks, we'll do an episode on Dutch oven. We get a lot of comments on the way we cook in cast iron. Some of that is a little bit different. I don't particularly like doing inserts or aluminum liners inside. I particularly like going straight to the cast iron. I will use those for the shape of a cake pan or something that's really different, especially baklava. I've cooked baklava in a Dutch oven and I'll put a pan in there for that because that's a little hard to get out of your Dutch oven. But other than baking cakes and small round cake pans, I try to put everything directly in the cast iron. Take care of your cast iron, season it every time, dry it. Never, 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 never use soap. Hot water and a little elbow grease to clean up everything you need. And a little salt sometimes will help you be an abrasive additive to your rag to help get the stuff off. So folks, we're gonna pull up here. I'm gonna get Lisa to ease up here just a little bit. We're gonna take a look at what we've got. We've got our quail that's been stuffed with our sausage. And we want to try to get a piece of that quail. And that's really hot, folks. But you taste a little bit of the wine, you do get some onion flavor. The thyme comes through really, really good. And we didn't overcook it, it's still really moist. And that's really important with a pheasant. You can, you can uh, overcook birds if you're not very careful, whether it be a Cornish hen, a chicken, or anything like that, especially deep frying it. Everybody wants to deep fry it real hard. Be careful, get a good crust, but get out of there before it gets overdone. And there's nothing worse than dry meat. So folks, I hope you enjoy the day. We're enjoying ours. The good Lord bless us with a good rain shower last night. So today we got the humidity. But folks, just enjoy your day, enjoy your food, make your recipes your own, and own your kitchen. So folks, enjoy your food.